Okay, so we've done a lot of um, mini app demos. Uh, the main focus this afternoon is going to be actually you guys turning it over to you guys and doing some coding. Um, I just have a couple more slides about the Python stuff that I wanted to show you um, about one of the improvements in Sensei 2.0 is the native Python adapter. So I'll go through those slides and then we'll get you guys set up to do the exercise where you're actually going to write the data adapter for Jean's um, Jacobi code. Um, and you know, when, when we introduce that exercise, we'll go through the, all of the steps that you will take and um, hopefully get you guys up and running so you can do that. It's a C++ based exercise. Um, so good, and then we'll wrap it up and call it a day. So uh, one of the new things is this Python data adapter. Um, it lets you write, instead of using the VTK data adapter, which I showed in my Newton mini app, the VTK data adapter is something that comes all hard-coded in um, with Sensei, and it lets you pass in a, a data object that then that data adapter um, implements a Sensei API for passing that to the analysis. Well, this is a more native way to do it. So um, with the Python data adapter, what you do is you provide callbacks um, to a Sensei programmable data adapter, and those callbacks will implement the Sensei API. Um, so I've done this for Newton mini app. So this is the Sensei V2 version of a data adapter for Newton. And so what I've done in this slide is just deleted all of the, the code for these functions just to show the function calls. Um, so I've got a constructor, um, git attribute, which is a, a Python way of forwarding um, function calls. Base returns a the base class or what I want to be the base class of this. It's not, it doesn't inherit or derive from any other class. Um, validate mesh name, that's a helper. Update is the call that the bridge calls every time the simulation changes. And then these set array, one, three, set geometry are helper functions to create the VTK objects again. And below that, I've got my Sensei 2.0 API. So those are all of um, the callbacks. Um, for the Sensei 2.0 API. Um, in terms of get number of meshes, get mesh name, get number of arrays, get array names, get mesh, and add array. So just to, to quickly look at this, um, the constructor, it creates a Sensei programmable data adapter. Um, and then it sets up these callbacks so that when um, the programmable data adapter gets passed into um, a Sensei analysis, um, it's going to call the, the data adapter API, and those calls are going to get routed to your functions, to your callbacks. Um, and so I wanted this class to actually inherit from programmable data adapter, um, but for various technical reasons, it, it doesn't work out in Python very well. So what I'm doing instead is having this um, self.pda, it's an instance of programmable data adapter, and I'm using this Python trick. If you have this, um, get attribute function. It's a special function in Python denoted by these two underscores. Um, what this does is when Python goes to look up a function in your class, it executes this get attribute. So then what I can do is, is forward that right to this Sensei programmable data adapter. So then for the most part, my class looks as if it is a programmable data adapter, albeit it's got some extra methods on it. Um, I have this just to, to return this programmable data adapter instance, and the validate mesh is a helper that just checks the mesh name for error checking. So here's our Sensei V2, V2 um, API implementations. Here's another little Pythonic trick. Um, so I've got my get number of meshes. Um, what this does is it declares a function and then it returns that function. The trick that it's doing here is called a closure. When you declare a function like this, the function can actually see what's above it in scope. And so this function, you can actually see this self parameter. Um, if I were to, to use this function directly, this def get number of meshes, if I were to give that to the Sensei programmable data adapter, it wouldn't work because this is a class method and it always expects the first parameter to be you know, itself. 
This way, I can return this callback, which takes no parameters, but I can still have access to this, um, this self um, variable. So I can use the class to store state, and I can access that. And that's called a closure. Um, it's a really neat trick. It's used a lot in JavaScript, but it also works in Python. Um, so you'll, every single um, Sensei 2.0 you know, API, I'm using that trick so that I can have access to the self-member of the class without actually having to pass it into the callback. Um, so git mesh name just returns bodies. Git number of arrays. Um, I'm caching them, so I look up and return. I'm just going to go through this really quickly. I mean, the point is basically to show that we're using callbacks, the Sensei programmable data adapter. Um, it's not about um, anything beyond that. Um, git mesh, again, I'm returning the callback. Mesh name, structure only, parameters, creating my poly data, my multi block. Um, and I'm returning that. So, in the Sensei 2.0 API, things are being returned by reference in the C++ side, but on the Python side, we're still returning you know, the return value um, because Python does you know, pass by value. So the, now the, the Python and the C APIs look slightly differently. Um, if there you know, is an error because we're not returning an error code, um, we're just raising um, an exception. So add array. Uh, same thing, basically, we're just putting the array in. I've got it cached. Um, release data, I'm letting go of all of the cache. Um, and then the update function has changed. Um, I'm calling these self. These are, these are caching the various arrays that are passed in um, and, and setting the time and the time step on my, my um, data adapter. Okay, so there, there is a bug here, and I'm not sure if it's a copy and paste or if it's actually like this in the code, but I didn't actually invoke the, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. This is the data adapter, so no, there's no problem. I was, for a second, I thought I should be seeing an execute on the analysis adapter there, but no, this is just updating the data adapter. My bad. And then these are the, the functions that create the VTK stuff and cache them um, with the points and the cells again. So, and, that, and that's it. And that's what the data adapter looks like for a pure Python solution, if you wanted to do a pure Python data adapter. Um, so I guess the takeaway from this is that um, it's implemented with callbacks. You can create a class, have an instance internally of the Sensei programmable data adapter. And then let me just go back to that slide where we're, we're in our uh, constructor of our Python class. We're creating the Sensei programmable data adapter, and we're putting all of these callbacks in. The trick to doing this um, is to using this thing called the closure. So you can access the self member to get the class state. See, we're going to use it there to get the cached values. Um, and there it is. And so with that, we can move on now to the Sensei, um, the exercise of the instrumenting the Jacobi code um, and creating a Sensei data adapter. So, um, so for this exercise, we're going to be working with the data adapters. And we have specifically a Jacobi data adapter class written by Jean. Um, it's derived from Sensei Data Adapter. Um, and it serves up the double precision temperature array from the Jacobi simulation into the analysis. Um, it reports the number of meshes, number of arrays, and mesh and array names. This is um, what I'm describing here um, is the Sensei version 2.0 API. The class actually can be compiled either for the old version or the new version. Um, I'm going to suggest that we do the exercise with the new version, because if you do that, then you can, um, there's a, a feature um, that we added in the new version, or the 2.0, um, to write out VTK data sets. Um, so 
we have um, a new VTK writer the, in Sensei 2.0. The new VTK writer is important for you guys because then that will allow you, once you finish your data adapter, you can run um, the simulation code and use that VTK writer to write out a representative data set from which you can use Paraview to generate the Catalyst script. Um, so that's the main focus of using Sensei 2.0. So for that reason, you're going to have to deal with meshes and mesh names. Um, the data adapter, it's going to construct a BTK multi-block um, with image data at each rank's um, block. So the local data will be an image data. Um, and so yesterday we had gone through a bunch of examples of creating image data. Um, you're going to have to set the extents to tell where in the global volume this image is positioned, the origin um, and the spacing. And um, so the way this, this data adapter works is that the bridge code will pass in a pointer to an array um, outside of the Sensei API, and that gets cached internally in the, in the class in a standard map. So if you look in the header file, you'll see this, this standard map from string to um, double star. Um, I can't remember if it's a double star, or VTK data array, um, smart pointer. But anyways, you'll find this map, and that's where you'll access um, the data from the simulation um, in your data adapter to pass it into the mesh in your add array call. So I'm going to suggest that we start with Catalyst. And the reason, um, I, I don't know. I, we don't have to start with Catalyst. We could, we could use libsim. In fact, I'll let you, the, the documentation here is for Catalyst in terms of what module you load. Um, and um, this um, option to the build. Um, if you wanted to use libsim instead, you would change this to libsim, and then you'd have to change this to libsim. It's up to you um, which one you prefer to, to start out with. Um, it's not going to matter. Um, so the first thing to do is load the module, um, change into this directory, um, make a build directory and change into that, then execute CMake, make sure you have these flags with the dash D Sensei 2 on, make it a debug build. If you get to the point where you're actually testing and running it, that will be important if you have any bugs. Um, point it towards your um, Sensei install. It's important that this is the install and not the build. Um, just because of the way that the configuration files get generated um, inside of Sensei. Um, and then you can compile it. The, the code will compile, but the data adapter, the Sensei 2.0 API um, virtual overrides are empty. And they're, they have um, to-dos with a brief explanation of what that you're supposed to do there. Now, so You'll notice that there's an exercise directory here. There's also a solution directory with this class with the solution. Um, you can look at that code if you get stuck. Um, to compile the example um, with the solution, so you could just run it, you would add this dash d make solution on into the build line, or you could open up the cmake cache.txt file and find that in there and change it from off to on. So you can also run CC make to go to the interactive mode of configuring CMake, right? You, uh, you know that, right? Yeah, if you know that, the CC make is a curses GUI for CMake. And so curses is this text GUI, and you can run it. And John showed that yesterday, where you see all the parameters and you can change them. That may, that may actually work well for this because there's not mer very many configuration parameters. So I haven't tried it. Maybe you can see all of the build parameters right on the first screen. I think you can. 
Yep. Okay, so. Let me open up the VM and let's, let's go through this. Let's look a little more closely in detail. I mean, I think what I'd like to see is that if we can get the data adapter you know, running, your data adapter, then you could go through and do something um, from 0 to 100 um, where you go and um, try, try the code out with Catalyst, try it out with uh, the VTK data writer, open up Paraview, create a Python script, and then run it with Catalyst. And then you could do the same thing for libsim. It all, all depends on how much time we have, but I think we should stop the exercise a little bit early and maybe go through running that with a solution or with you guys' code. I don't recall if you said that the advantage of using the Sensei 2 interface is that we also have this uh, post VTKIO layer, which means that you can actually get an IO interface to your code, your own simulation code, without, have, without having to write any IO code, okay, in your own simulation. Because using, instead of using an in situ coupling with your simulation, you would simply use uh, the VTK IO layer and then dump your results to, to disk. Okay, so it's actually a cheap way to add IO uh, to your own code. Yes, very, very nicely said. Um, I think this is, this is pretty well known. Uh, at supercomputing centers, uh, people like to concentrate on their application. They don't like to do IOs. Nobody likes to do IOs, right? Right, <laughs> and, and VTK IO, it actually works quite well in parallel and it scales well. Um, and it's consumable by Visit and Catalyst. So if you're going to dump your simulation data to something, it's a reasonable choice. Um, it may not give you as optimal performance as something like Adios, but yeah. you can read it right into. Yeah. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm actually looking at the solution. I just want to go through and review a little bit um, about these, these functions. Um, so here you see add array. Um, this is where the simulation, ooh, the font is kind of bad. Um, is that readable? Yeah, so add array. This is where the, um, the bridge code is going to be passing in the um, computed solution from the Jacobi mini app. And so what it's doing there is it's, um, using the name of the array and it's storing in this map. So it's saying if the pointer is not the same, um, then I'm going to store the pointer. And there's this other, I don't know, state variable that's caching VTK arrays. You don't have to worry about that. The main point is this variable's map is where you get the data from the simulation in your um, implementations that you're writing. So, so Berlin, yeah. <clears throat> I have a question, actually. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. The signature of the add array mm -hmm. method takes as input a double array, a pointer to a double array. Mm -hmm. What if you have multiple variables of different types? So, you know, this is, you know, specifically tailored for the Jacobi um, simulation. So there was one array with a double star. Um, so if you had um, a, different, um, a different setup where you need to somehow get store different data, um, you'd have to come up with a different solution. So yes, what that uh, might however, be. However, the add array is, is a virtual method inherited from the base class. Uh, not this one, no. Not this one. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I... Not this one. It's a poor choice of naming. Yeah, yeah, but okay, you, that's why I got confused. So, so here's what happened. This was, I think you took, you, you wrote this, but you <laughs> took it from one of the Sensei examples. Yes. And that was maybe a poor example. But so what they've done here is they've named a method the same as one of the Sensei 2 APIs, yes. which I feel is a bad choice. 
But if you look at the signature where it has a string and a double star, then it, it's not the override for the Sensei 2 API. It's just an, it's what's called an overload. Yes. Um, it's an overload. Yeah. It's an overload. Um, so it does make it a little confusing. But this is, um, this is how the simulation is going to pass in the data. Um, if you have a different um, array, like a, say a float star or an int star, you're going to have to have methods for that. Yes. Basically, I mean, this thing, I mean, the only thing I would change is the name. Instead of um, add array, I'd call it like set temperature array. Yes. And then I'd take that name parameter out and just hard code the temperature. Yes. And then you could make setters for every array that you have to store. Mm -hmm. um, and you know you could get creative and maybe do something else. I don't know. It's not too bad of a solution, because here we just have this map. It's storing a pointer to the data. It's a reasonable, yep. it's a reasonable choice. Um, now, I, I want to bring to your attention this pound if defined, um, Sensei 2. Because we're going to do the example when uh, exercise in Sensei 2, these are the methods that you want to use. There's actually both Sensei 1 and Sensei 2 API in this code. But I just want you to use these and be very careful not to use the Sensei 1 ones. But you can find the Sensei 2 by looking for this pound if defined Sensei 2. Um, and in your code, um, these are actually the solutions. I'm looking at the solution in your code. You don't, ha don't feel like you have to worry about error checking, um, unless you really want to. I mean, I've done that, um, and John's done that, but we don't need to do that um, for you, because I want to keep it simple for you. And don't worry about caching meshes and whatnot. Um, so again, here's the git mesh. Not going to, don't want to give the solution away too much, add array. Um, more complicated. Try and use a zero copy if you can. Get number of arrays. Should be a very simple function. Don't worry about doing error checking or anything like that, um, unless you really want to. Um, get array name. Should be a very simple implementation, unless you do error checking. Um, release data. Um, so let's look at the exercise version. So in the exercise folder, you'll find the Jacobi data adapter um, class. In this, this class is the same as the solution, except the, the methods um, have to-dos, the bodies that be replaced with to-dos, with some um, notes about what goes on in that function. Um, so your job in this exercise is to go into these to-dos Again, be careful of doing the ones for the Sensei 2 API and fill in these to-dos with the actual code. Don't worry about the error checking. You know, do the simplest solution you can in the, for the sake of time. OK. So the first step, then, is to go and compile this application. So once, once you're in that folder, in CSCS in situ Jacobi Sensei C. Um, you're going to make a build directory. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, CMake doesn't have make clean. So it's much easier to do a clean if you can just yeah. RM um, what you've got. Yes? I think we don't have the exercise folder on our machine. No. Oh, really? Um. Let me see. Um, And that's right. We have solution. Uh, git. Okay. So so maybe I need to push this up to GitHub. Um, <coughs> So I have, seem to have some network problem with the VM. Um, let me reboot it and see if that doesn't fix it. I think the network's working on this Mac. Um, yeah. 
So I, if, if that's the case, and I believe you, um, then I'm going to just have to push this up um, to the GitHub really quick. So let me do that. Hmm. But do you guys have the solution directory? Yes, they do. Ah, uh, OK. OK. I must have, I forgot to commit the exercise. Oops. Okay, so can you guys in your um, in your in the the folder here, the Jacoby Sense AC, could you guys do a git pull and see if you um, that gives you that gets you the file? Okay, my bad. I I apologize for that. I forgot to commit that into the repo. Okay. Okay. So now um, I'm going to try. The first thing to do is actually just get this thing to build. Um, so I'm going to show you what I do. You could use the CC Make GUI instead if that's what you like. Um, first of all, load the module. And this is going to be the Sensei. And since we're using the, the two, we're going to do the, the exercise with 2.0. Um, I'm going to say Catalyst. You could feel free to. to to do libsim if that's what you want to do. I mean, the, the coding part and the compiling and everything is exactly the same. It's just which back end you want to use first. You can use both back ends. You'll just need two builds, um, one for Catalyst, one for libsim. Again, that's because of the incompatibilities in between the VTK and Python versions um, that these two um, tools use. Um, so I will cmake um, dash d uh, sensei underscore two equals on dash d um, sensei directory or dir. And then I'm going to have to point it to our sensei installs, which is in uh, home sc17 sensei. Oops, sc17 software sensei 2.0 uh, catalyst. Um, and then in the lib directory and the CMake directory is where the configuration files end up. And lastly, I want to make sure this is a debug build. CMake build type is the variable that sets that. If you don't do this, you just won't have debug 
symbols, um, which will be helpful if there's any bugs. And then um, finally, uh, I point it to the source code, which is one directory up. And let's see if that does the trick. Um, there is this warning um, that we always see because we're of Mesa. Um, that's safe to that's safe to ignore. And then we can make. And you'll see a bunch of warnings about unused parameters. That's because the to do extra the to do functions aren't touching those those parameters. There's warnings about missing a return. So once once you guys do the exercises, well, I'll go away. So great, and you know, interrupt anytime, ask questions. Um, definitely let me and John know if there's any anything you guys need. Yeah, a return of zero means that no error occurred. So that's, that's definitely, if you don't return a zero, then the analysis adapter is going to assume that an error you know, happened, and it may not run. Yeah. you remember how to change the, uh, the skating mode? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I have it in the skate mode, so it's Oh, it's you have it in the skate mode. Yeah. I don't want it to have this. You don't want it to have that. Um, can you can you make it smaller? Like, is that you don't want it to be like that? Because I want to oh. put it side by side with the with uh, the PDF. With the PDF. And when I put it like this, you see it looks everything stretched. Oh right. And in the beginning when I open I, the much. Okay. Yeah. So you can't do it because um, if you put it like that, then the aspect ratio is going to be stretched, right? Yes. Oh, oh, but then you'd have the scroll bars if, if it wasn't in that mode. Ah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I... I was I, around and I could not find the option to put it I, back. Uh, I know, there's usually a menu for this thing. Ah, crap, where's this thing? No. I was looking that... I don't know where that menu is. Usually I see it up... Um, Yeah, because it's here. So, see this on the Mac? It has this view menu. Uh, why you don't see that? And a scale mode. Yeah, I don't know why you don't see that. Because on my Linux machine, I have that as well. But I haven't tried this on Windows. So, did you find? Okay, so I have something for you. Try um, go into the VM um, and try. Control C. Oh, yeah. And and oh, yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So um, it's three o'clock now, and I was wondering if folks want a coffee break. If if you guys do now might be a good time for that. And so then I would say half hour at the most of coffee break or whatever you feel is appropriate and then come back, keep working for a little bit longer and then we'll move on.